بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم وی وار ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ لاجسٹک ریگریشن کلاسیفائڈ وین یو ٹاک اباؤٹ کھین این وی آلسو ریویوڈ اٹس ڈسیزن باؤنڈریز فار ڈفرینٹ ویلیوز آف کھے سو ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ ڈسیزن باؤنڈری فار لاجسٹک ریگریشن کلاسیفائر ایف یو ریکال دیٹس ہاؤ وی ڈیفائنڈ اے کلاسیفائر آور ہائپوتھس فنکشن گیوز اس پروبیلٹی of class membership given x so we have this sigmoid theta transpose x uh, or linear function followed by a sigmoid gives us probability that y is equal to 1 given x and uh, we assigned class for a given x using this formulation that when hypothesis function value the probability is greater than 0.5 we assign a uh, one to y or we assign one label for the input x or we assign zero otherwise if we look at the sigmoid function right, sigmoid function is plotting is input is theta transpose x and output is sigma theta transpose x sigmoid of theta transpose x how do you translate this condition sigmoid of theta transpose x greater than 0.5 in terms of theta transpose x when this value is greater than 0.5 theta transpose x is greater than 0 so i can equivalently write this class assignment as follows and given this we can say that all x all test points for which theta transpose x is greater than 0 would be classified as class 1 right or we can say theta transpose x is equal to 0 is our decision boundary when theta transpose x is greater than 0 we say we have class 1 when theta transpose x is less than 0 we will use label of class 0 right question here is what does theta transpose x greater than 0 represent it represents a half space in d dimensional space in fact theta transpose x is equal to 0 represents a hyperplane in d dimensional space and this hyperplane divides the d dimensional space into two half spaces the one half space is theta transpose x greater than 0 and other other half space is theta transpose x less than 0 since this is very important because we will use this uh, in support vector machines uh, i'm going to briefly define uh, uh, this theta transpose x equal to 0 and this represents a hyperplane Uh, when d is equal to 1 we start with a very simple case when d is equal to 1 that means we only have a biased term theta not and theta 1 so we only have one feature what does this equation represents our space is only one dimensional it's a real line right and uh, we may have classes like this if we have binary classification so this theta not plus theta 1 x is equal to 0 so this represents a line and it is okay it simply means x is equal to minus theta not over theta 1 so this line is dividing my space a real line into two half spaces the first one for which x or 1 is greater than uh, th minus theta not over theta 1 and other is when x of 1 is less than minus theta not of theta 1 and we can extend this to two dimensions when d is equal to 2 we have this right if you move theta not to other side you can simply say that this is uh, an equation of a line right so this represents a line in a two dimensional space if these are our features so theta transpose x equal to 0 would represent a line in in the two dimensional space 
So when we have uh, theta transpose x is equal to zero, uh, it divides a two dimensional space into two half spaces, right? So this one, this half space is when theta transpose x is greater than zero and this half space when theta transpose x is less than zero. So the interpretation of this theta one and theta two that these two constants, theta one and theta two, so they represent uh, a point in two dimensional space. And this point is in fact a normal to this, this plane or this line. So if I want to uh, denote theta one and theta two uh, in this two dimensional space, so that would be representing a vector which is normal, which is uh, orthogonal uh, to the plane, to the line. Right? And when we extend this uh, to higher dimensions for d is equal to three, and uh, theta transpose x is equal to zero would represent a plane in three dimensional space that is again dividing space into two half spaces. And we can uh, generalize it that hyperplane and theta transpose x equal to zero divides a space into two half spaces, uh, theta transpose x greater than zero and theta transpose x less than zero. And, uh, and th this explains the why do we, we, why do we call this set all x for which theta transpose x greater than zero as half space because hyperplane is dividing the space into two half spaces. I hope this is clear. Uh, we will use this later, but uh, for now we can only focus, we can only, uh, the take home is that theta transpose x equal to zero, this represents a hyperplane in the d-dimensional space. Right? Or we can say the boundary is linear for a logistic regression classifier. We will all have, we will always have linear boundaries if we stick to the original model we had. In the model we had theta transpose x followed by a sigmoid function. So due to this theta transpose x inner product, we have a linearity here. And due to this linearity, we get linear boundaries, we get straight line boundaries, uh, we get hyperplanes in the feature space as decision boundary. Right. Okay, let's take one example. And we have our data uh, of the students uh, for some admission into a program. Uh, we take uh, two exams of the students. We have scores of exam one and we have scores of exam two. So exam one could be a general test, exam two could be a subject test. And uh, so for green points, uh, sorry, for these uh, blue points, and uh, these students have been admitted and uh, the students with uh, diamond shaped points so these have not been admitted right? so we can say we have a binary classification problem and uh, y is equal to one corresponds to when the student is admitted and when y is equal to zero corresponds to the case when the student is not submitted when the student is not admitted uh, we want to predict admission given exam one and exam two scores. Uh, we have a two dimensional feature space. We have scores of exam one and exam two and we want to build a classifier that predicts admission given these scores. Uh, all x uh, for which theta transpose x is greater than zero classified as class one, we give them admission. Uh, when we talk about the scene boundary, we have two dimensional space. We know it's between a line and that is given by theta naught plus theta one x one plus theta two x two is equal to zero. If we assume that uh, we have learned these parameters from the training data, so we obtain theta naught is equal to minus 92, theta one is equal to 92 over 95, theta two is equal to one. And when we substitute these numbers in this equation, in fact, what we obtain is the equation of this green line which is the decision boundary. Anything to the right of the decision boundary, theta transpose x greater than zero, uh, class one. Uh, anything to the left of this boundary, theta, theta, that has theta transpose x less than zero, uh, class zero, right? So sigmoid returns close to one or zero for points farther from the boundary, right? For example, if you take two points, right? 
if you take a point here, right? Okay, let me draw a diamond here. If I draw a diamond here and I draw a very close, very far, far from this, this in boundary, right? For this square test point, sigmoid will turn almost one. And for this diamond shape, sigmoid will turn always zero. So anything to the right of this uh, decision boundary. So here, theta transpose x is greater than zero. If you're moving further from the decision boundary, the sigmoid will return the value close to one. Anything along the boundary would be classified, uh, sigmoid would return 0 0.5. And anything in this half space would be uh, classified as class zero or as you move away from the boundary uh, in this half space, uh, sigmoid value would, would uh, converge to zero. If you want to visualize this in a three dimensional space, I'm going to plot a sigmoid function uh, for different values of first feature and for different values of second feature. If this is a decision boundary, what do you expect a plot to look like? So you would have one in the blue region and you would have almost zero in the red region. 0.5 as you are on the, on, on the boundary line and you expect something like this. Right. So this as green is the decision boundary, right? Uh, as we're moving in this direction, we're moving into the blue half space. And if you're moving in this direction, you're moving towards the red half space. Right, so uh, that's how uh, our logistic regression maps uh, the values uh, uh, versus distance from the decision boundary. Okay, but the question is, can we have a non-linear decision boundaries in logistic regression? Right, in practice, we may have a case something like this in which we have two classes, and these two classes can be separated, can be very well separated uh, using a non-linear boundary. To answer this question, we, we first need to understand the origin of the linear decision boundary. We have theta transpose x equal to zero defining the decision boundary. And since it's a linear combination of the features, that's why we get a linear boundary. If we want to have a non-linear boundary, we connect with the concept of polynomial regression. If you remember, when we define polynomial regression, we, we, we still formulated a polynomial regression as the linear regression parameter. But we could model non-linearities. We could model non-linear behavior between output and input. If we replace what is inside the sigmoid with the polynomial instead of linear, we may have a non-linear boundaries. For example, uh, when d is equal, for d is equal to two, we know that for a standard logistic regression model, we have this formulation. We have a linear boundary, but we may have a non-linear boundary if we pre-process the features, right? Instead of using two features, now I'm using four features. The first feature, the second feature, the square of the first feature, and the square of the second feature. Sorry, the first feature, second feature, the square of first feature, and the square of second feature. And this way, I can have a non-linear non boundary because when you substitute this is equal to zero, right? We know when this is equal to zero, sigmoid would be 0.5. When this is greater than zero, sigmoid is greater than 0.5. When this is less than zero, sigmoid is less than 0.5. When you substitute this equal to zero, that would give you a decision boundary. And when you substitute this equal to zero, this will result in a non-linear boundary due, due to quadratic terms you have. Okay, let's, let's take a look at it. So for example, we have uh, 
the same nonlinear boundary and for example you have this data right? and this data is not linearly separable so i have this decision boundary which is circular in shape anything inside this would be classified as class zero and anything outside of this circle would be classified as class zero class one and we assume that we learn the parameters theta zero theta one theta two theta three theta four from the data and we obtain these values theta one theta two are approximately zero theta three theta four is equal to one and theta naught is equal to minus 2.25 so with these values this is our hypothesis function if you see the same bond would be given by minus 1 plus x1 square plus x2 square is equal to 0 or equivalently the boundary would be x1 square plus x2 square is equal to 2.25 which is in fact a circle of radius 1.5 so uh, in general we have a linear decision boundary for logistic regression but if we can manipulate features before uh, passing the features to the logistic regression model we can have non-linear boundaries but uh, uh, i should emphasize again that in general logistic regression has a linear boundary uh, due to the inherent uh, the model we have uh, in which we have theta transpose x is equal to zero right so, so that was all about decision boundary for logistic regression in the next video we will talk about uh, the loss function we will define loss function for logistic regression classification